as in, we just got foshed. Fosh. That doesn't really define it very well, though. That was a poor choice of a sentence. That's how it's used, though. True. That's the perfect use of that word. But it doesn't help people to understand what it means. We're, We're going to get foshed out there on the playing field. Foshed. That's, that's a little better, yeah. Gives you a slighter... My, My cousin, cousin once got foshed in that camp. camp. No, that's... Well, I guess that could still be correct. <laughs> but it's going to give people the wrong idea. Anyways. Hey, everybody. <laughs> this is Rich Outfield. And Big Anklevich, welcome. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. This is like episode 9 or 10. Yeah. I... We've eclipsed the amount of listeners with the number of episodes already. Wow. That could have been said a long time ago. That's true. By the time we made it to episode two. I That's because you we... refused to listen to them. Ah, so I'm going to let you go first. What is bothering you? What is upsetting you? What you is always irritating? make me go first. Do I really? And then I have to say, I got nothing and make you go first. Oh, we were talking today and it seemed that you and I both had two or three things that we wanted to talk about. But now that we're recording. Yeah, I don't remember blank. any of them. That's kind of the way it always seems to be. We need a notebook so we can keep track of the things that we plan out. We accomplish so little while we're sitting here, and that gets my goat. Well, okay, one thing. Not too long ago, Lucasfilm announced that the Star Wars films are going to be re-released in the theaters in 3D. Oh, now, we've been talking about that Everything for is years. re-released in 3D. You knew that was coming. Really? You can name two. Toy Story 1 and 2. That doesn't count. That was one movie. You couldn't buy a ticket to just Toy Story 2. Um, those creepy noises coming from outside. It's rain. Huh. I'm going to shut the window. What is this rain you speak of? <laughs> is that really a, a big thing? I, I'm like, even Beauty and the Beast 3D didn't happen. Even though, gosh, who knows how many thousands of dollars did they spend. Was that something they were going to do and they gave up on? or It was taken off the schedule. But now that the Blu-ray is out, I don't know that they're even going to bother. I, I think the theatrical release was, you know, sort of an, an advertisement that, hey, we're going to re-release this and get this on everybody's mind again. Here comes the Blu-ray conveniently. You know? mm. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that was something that was going to happen eventually. I just assumed, you know, George Lucas just wants money. So he's going to trot out those movies again and again in every format that is possible. 3D, that's new. Okay, we'll do it. Blu-ray? Okay, we'll make a big deal out of releasing them in Blu-ray. Oh, we'll make a... Didn't he release an archival edition or something like that? You could get the Star Wars movies in their original form, although he made it a crappy version where you couldn't get, like... It was the Laserdisc transfers, yeah. Widescreen or whatever. Oh, yeah, they were non-anamorphic, if you know what that means. I really don't. I heard that was substandard, though, but I don't really understand what that means. What does that mean, do you know? Is it like nympholepsy, or is that different? Define nympholepsy. Uh, emotionally outburst. Emotional outburst? Okay. I don't... Isn't that what we came up with as a definition? It's that was, crazy. It was months ago. That was ago. in a completely different episode, so yeah. nobody will understand this. No, it's in fact, it's, it's probably in the future. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even consider that. Oh. Get ready for it, folks. Well, should, Mark your calendars. Shouldn't down. I just cut out all the nymphalepsy stuff? Oh, I guess. No, I, I. If you find it interesting, I don't. It's, I, it's well, stupid. Well, I don't get it. This podcast is just for me. Is that what it is? Because you won't listen to it. I will. We too. have no, I listen to it. We have no listeners. If it's not going to be listened to by you, <laughs> then I don't know why I even put it on the web. Okay, anamorphic is just. You know, a shot with a certain lens that expands things to a... a, It's just a way, an easy way of shooting things without having to switch all sorts of lenses. Anyhow, on television, the anamorphic is is the widescreen television type thing. Uh, The the bars go away. It reformats itself to the shape of your TV if you have a uh, a rectangular television. Okay. Uh, In other words, if you put in the DVD that came out in... When was it? 2000 and six or seven the the dvd that was non-anamorphic you'd still get the black bars at the top and the bottom even if you have a television that's long and thin uh, because it just won't adapt itself to that that that's how i understand the the problem with these non-anamorphic dvds and and by the year 2000 2002 
they had sort of stopped doing non-anamorphic transfers because by then people were getting widescreen televisions, they were projection TVs, all these things. Right. And to have years later there be a non-anamorphic one. And it hadn't been remastered. The pictures were pretty not crappy, but it's it's substandard. Mm -hmm. That bothered Watched a lot out of people. And et people and Lucas wanna... plugged all these millions of dollars into restoring the films for the special editions, but uh it was pre-restoration and so oh, right. it was just not not high quality for these and I don't know who calls them archival versions. Um, I but, think somebody but, just called it that because it included the actual original film instead of the new crap that he's put in. Somebody I know called it that. I don't think that's... For it to be an archival version, I think you would want it to be pristine. Right. 1977 version kind of thing. Maybe not. I, I don't archive is for the records for 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 future reference uh -huh. and so i don't i don't understand that term exactly but but certainly there's got to be a term for the original versions that, mm -hmm. that everybody can agree on and and you know i don't even really want to talk about that because i mean we could do 10 that gets my good episodes <laughs> on a different Star Wars movie. Yeah, I was um, just kind of mentioning, I was, uh, got us kind of off track by mentioning the anamorphic thing, but yeah, I was just talking about how Lucas, it just seems like if there's something, some way he can make more money off of these films without actually doing anything, without actually coming up with something worthwhile, something new, then he'll do it. Put out the movie in DVD. Oh, what? There's a new kind of DVD? Oh, I'll put it out in that then. I'll make people wait until the demand is very high, and then I'll put it out in that and get a crap load more money out of it. So on and so on. And that bothers you? Doesn't everybody do that? Not not to the extent that Lucas does. Not to does. the extent that Star Wars, Star Wars is... You know, like you, We were talking about that before we started recording, where I said I was interested in buying the At-At that has come out this year. And you were saying, what other 30-year-old movie out there is there that has a toy coming out this year or something like that? I think it's especially for collectors. Well, it's a $110 toy. And I was saying that it's for us because it's a 30-year-old movie. Right. That's um, what I'm and saying. Said, but yet it's still every year. I mean, I, I said that and my son immediately said, oh, I want an ad at Can I have one? Okay. Well, let, let's, let, let me put this out here. In case this is your first episode ever, in case you're new to this country, in case you're new to this planet, the Star, the Star Wars, Wars trilogy, trilogy are the, are the greatest, greatest movies, movies ever <laughs> made. Made, made. Hence, it's a big deal. Hence, please re-release them again and again. Hence, make toys 30 years later make a bigger deal when this hits Blu-ray than when The Journey of Natty Gan hits Blu-ray. But it bothers you that he's re-releasing them in... 3D or in theaters? You know, I, I just don't like 3D. And I especially don't like remade 3D. Going back, you know, we went and watched those Toy Story movies. And I didn't think the 3D was anything special. But it was cool to see Toy Story and Toy Story 2 in the theater again. Just re-releasing, saying, oh yeah, it's the 30th anniversary. Let's watch them all again. Or something like that is fine. I hate that he endlessly tinkers with these. They were the greatest movies ever, like you said. He endlessly tinkers with him. He's got to get in there and, oh, I'm going to F it up a little further and make people more pissed off because I've screwed this movie that they love so much a little more. With every iteration, there are new problems. It's that he more, creates. yeah, more abominable each time he creates another version of it. And uh, that, that gets my goat. I really dislike, the, you know, and making it 3D is... There's nothing to that. That's just a gimmick to make money. There's, you know, you can't even say, oh yeah, it's the 30th anniversary. Maybe it even is, but that's not why they're doing it. They're just doing it because everybody likes 3D now. So why don't we trot the Star Wars movies back out there again and make a couple more million off of it? Because his bag full of dollar bill chips is running low and he needs more. You know, he keeps the money in the pouch under <laughs> the his neck chin. Neck pouch. <laughs> um, see, in 2005, I remember Lucas announcing that Star Wars was going to be re-released in theaters in 3D. And I remember being so excited about that and yeah. how great this is going to be. And oh, before cool. Before 3D and, became an all-encompassing thing that it is now. And I've complained about 3D a lot 
on the show and on the, the real show and to anyone that will hear me and to people on freeway entrances that, 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 that will stop for my yeah, sign. Yeah, he stands out and holds the sign there. But 3D didn't used to be what it is today. When I was a kid, a 3D movie was an experience. It was something you would see once every 10 years or, you know, it was a, it right. was so much fun and so cool and awesome and things right there in front of your face that you can almost touch. And 3D is not that anymore. Yeah, it's not an event this, like it was. No, no, no. Just going to see a 3D movie. None of that applies anymore. I don't know if it was lost with the red and blue lenses on the little cardboard glasses, but even Avatar, there was never any of that. Oh, wow. You know, jumping back in your seat because it's almost hitting you in the face. Uh-huh. It's now just an excuse to charge more money. <laughs> That's what it you is know, it, for those Hollywood types anyway. I saw Friday the 13th 3 on video and it was just a piece of crap movie. And I thought that it was, you know, one of the worst of those installments. Mm -hmm. And then I went to a revival theater in L.A. and they showed it in 3D as when it first came out. And holy cow, it was a completely different movie. It was so much fun and people cheering and laughing and going, whoa, when things would jump out. And that made a difference, be, you know, three letter grades of difference. <laughs> that movie had been so bad and now suddenly, oh my gosh, it's a good movie. And stuff. Went from an F all the way to a C. It's, it was better than that. <laughs> it, Captain EO was just some amazing experience. And, and I just, was that in 3D? That's I all it had. I totally don't remember that. I went and saw it at Disneyland and everything, and I don't even recall the fact that it was in 3D. I just remember Michael Jackson and bad costumes. Interesting. Uh, anyhow, I, I just I don't know what happened with 3D. We've talked about it before, and you say that you know maybe as, as you get older you can't experience 3D. You have to have 2020 vision. You can't experience 3D. I've seen a lot of 3D footage or some of these movies and all that stuff, and it just does nothing for me. But you know, it wasn't that long ago that I went and saw a bunch of 3D movies. I saw House of Wax at a, at a revival theater, and holy cow, it was cool. And to tell me. That a movie from the 50s, I saw Creature from the Black Lagoon in 3D, and it was it blew away anything that I've seen in 3D in the last little while. And when when, when you and I went and saw Toy Story 2 and 1 and 2, it was such a waste, dude. It was, yeah. We would have benefited so much more from just you and me getting a couple of burgers or a pizza and watching it on your television. Yeah. I don't know what, it, what the deal was. We still that. would have saved money, I think, too. <laughs> Getting two large pizzas and watching the DVDs, we would have still saved money. <laughs> They've tricked me so many times now. After Avatar, you and I talked, and it might have been on the show where I said, you know, that 3D was really interesting. I don't need to see anything after this. I, 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 let's let that be the capper, the, the book closing on 3D, that we saw Avatar, and it was done in a new way, and cool, no more. And since then, I think I've still seen two or three movies really? in 3D. And every time I walk out and go, huh, that didn't add anything to the movie. I, I would have liked or hated that movie just as much had it been cheaper. Mm -hmm. And yet I still do it. But I'm drawing my line in the sand. You know, Here they invade no our further. space and we fall back. They assimilate entire worlds and we fall back. The line must be drawn here, here and no further. So you will not see these Star Wars movies in 3D. Now, oh, your oh, goat I'd... was being gotten by something beyond the fact that they were just in 3D. No, no, right. Yeah, that was that, that's true. The, I, I had two complaints. And one was the whole 3D doesn't matter anymore. But in 2005, I imagined the Death Star Trench in three dimensions and how cool that was going to be. Or the asteroid field oh, yeah. and all, seeing all those little things all over my face. 3D doesn't do that. Not anymore. So who cares? But, you know, the speeder bike going through all those, those trees, trees and stuff. Yeah. Imagine if they actually made 3D that worked. How cool that would be. And, and, and you know, you may be – well, I was going to say you may be listening. Nobody's listening. Die. Um, you may be <laughs> You're saying – telling the one person that is listening to die. Well – That's it. Die, die, you know, peacefully in your bed, surrounded by loved ones. You're saying die to all of you who aren't listening as well. <laughs> there you go. So. No, I mean, okay. I just, I'm just disgusted that we put in this work and nobody cares. But, it, but it's okay. That's another nobody, thing to be angry about. Nobody's ever cared about the show, so that there's that. We've got Nigel, and that's all we really need. 
We got Nigel to listen to the show, Wendy to listen to the outtakes, but nobody to listen to that gets <laughs> Mike. I, I was going to say, okay, you may be listening and saying, well, 3D works just fine for me. It's awesome. I love the 3D. I, there are three dimensions. Things come out at me. Shrek's little things on the top of his head were practically touching me during that whole movie. And if that's the case, then the problem is with me. Yeah, see, I don't think the remade 3D things work anything like the ones that... Like, for example, we t- you mentioned Avatar. Avatar, I thought that the 3D worked. They didn't do gimmicks, you know, like on Friday the 13th, where the dork is, like, doing his yo-yo right at the camera, and they would shot it from a goofy angle just so they could get that effect of the yo-yo coming towards the camera. Avatar didn't go there. They didn't make it a gimmicky thing. But there was still lots of, you mentioned the asteroids, if they were all floating in all different spots. For example, that part where he goes to the tree of life or the tree of knowledge, knowledge of good, of good whatever it was, the, the tree with those little dandelion seed creature things that floated around those things were all over the place i mean they were floating out and in and around and they felt like you could just reach out and touch it grab at it kind of a thing like you mentioned the the, you know there were some points where there was like that but i don't think that's possible in the redone 3d i think that might be the problem is the fact that none of these films that you've seen 3d recently were actually shot in 3d the only one was that actually that way was Avatar, and the rest were all just like, oh, let's take this one and we'll just have the computer kind of change things around a little bit for us and make it look like it has dimensions. Because, I mean, Toy Story 1 and 2, when we saw them in 3D, it wasn't like that where things came out of the screen at you. It seemed more like the screen was a window back into a 3D world. You could see depth going back, but nothing seemed to come forward. I, that's the only other time I've gone to see 3D, so maybe my experience is complete crap. And you, who even though you hate 3D, have continued to go to 3D movies. Well, they, they fool me. They trick me. <laughs> How they tr- say, in 3D, and because they don't also say, also available in 2D. You don't realize, and so you go to the 3D version. <laughs> I wish that I would listen to that voice that says also very one 2D. But they make it such a big deal. Like the the Mega Mind trailer where it's just all about 3D. It's in 3D or 3D. Will Ferrell is even funnier in three dimensions. I guess you hear that crap enough times and you start to believe it. So giving you the opportunity to do the Richard Keir Gerbil line. Sorry. You can only my hear. I hadn't gone there. Yet. I was just <laughs> thinking about picking up my cup and getting a drink of water here. The water, right. Uh, but okay, that that's fine as long as they continue to also available in 2D. I will be all right with it. I'm not, I'm done. I'm not going to see any more 3D movies. Yeah, but it just doesn't work for me, mm-hmm. and I I'm disappointed by that. I, I would like the wonder to come back. And and dude, Avatar, say what you will about you know it's funny how people turned on that so fast. Yeah, say what it made a lot of money. Say what you will about Avatar. The wonder was all throughout that movie. Yeah. But that wonder still existed in 2D. Also available in 2D. <laughs> right. That's this movie gonna... is full of wonder in 3D. Also available in 2D. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, yeah. and, and I think it might have been our first or second episode where I railed against that. Oh, every trailer is a talking animal CG movie and they all end in 3D. 3D. Yeah. And, and so I'm not going to tr- talk about that again. I understand that you can make a couple extra bucks on every single ticket sold. And that it works for enough people or enough people are tricked or enough people – I guess it's the equivalent of supersizing your meal or whatever. They're just used <laughs> to it. It's like, well, if we have the option, a small size meal or a super size. Well, of course I'm going to choose the deluxe kind of thing. I, I, I don't know. Oh, I, you know, we've been talking for a long time and I still have more to complain about. So we're going to call it quits right now. Is that all right? Sure, sure. Okay yeah, we can that? do another one next week. Okay. It keeps tune, going. Tune in next week. We'll, we'll pick off – We'll pick up. We'll pick our noses, sadly. Aren't you glad it's not a video podcast? (laughs) We will pick up where we left off. Yes. Good night. See ya. That gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Very sad. My goat. My goat. Say, that gets my goat. This might get my goat. (laughs) Say, that gets my goat. That might get my goat. (laughs) 